Welcome. My name is Nicholas Bouchen. I'm a CG supervisor and visual effects supervisor in Vancouver, Canada. I've put this material together to give you a better understanding of camera principles and terminology. The goal is to enable you to better understand camera data so that you can integrate it into your work. If you have any critiques or suggestions regarding the content of this training, please let me know through the support page at cgmasters.com. Whenever a new term is used, the text will appear on the screen. The text indicates that the new term will be covered later in the training material. If you wish, you can skip to the description of that term and then come back to continue where you left off. As visual effects artists, we are always coming into contact with imagery and data generated by people using real cameras somewhere out there in the real world. Without a solid understanding, it can be difficult to sort through and utilize the various, sometimes conflicting, information to create good, accurate visual effects elements. It can also be difficult to understand how to set up and manipulate virtual cameras. If you have ever had difficulty trying to wrap your head around aspect ratios, depth of field, focal length, exposure, motion blur, or film back, you will likely find something useful. If you have ever had to match a CG camera to a plate without a camera report and found yourself floundering, then this video will be useful. If you have to match move a plate, there's definitely something here for you. A motion picture camera exposes a light sensitive recording medium, usually film or an electronic recording device called a CCD, to focused light. Images are recorded in sequence. The recorded images are played back in sequence to generate a moving picture. A motion picture camera is composed of two primary elements, the lens and the camera body. The lens contains all the optical elements and the aperture, while the camera body contains the gate, the shutter, and the recording medium. Lenses come for the most part in one of two flavors, zoom lenses and fixed focal length lenses, and are composed of lens elements and an aperture of some sort. The aperture allows the cinematographer to limit the amount of light reaching the recording medium. Zoom lenses allow you to change the focal length over time, while fixed focal length lenses, often referred to as prime lenses, limit you to one fixed field of view. Prime lenses offer superior optical quality due to their simpler design. They are also lighter, smaller, and less expensive than zoom lenses. Zoom lenses are great for, well, zooms, and they allow the camera crew to quickly change from one focal length to another without having to change lenses. However, zoom lenses are complex and therefore are more prone to lens aberrations such as barrel distortion, pin cushion distortion, and chromatic aberration. All lenses are subject to lens flares which can pose significant problems in post and should be avoided unless explicitly required in the shot. Depending on the magnification of the lens, it may be referred to as a wide lens, a normal lens, or a long lens. Wide lenses are called wide because they have a very wide field of view. They make close objects seem farther away and accentuate lines of perspective. A fisheye lens is an extreme example of a wide lens. Wide lenses have shorter focal lengths than normal or long lenses. They also let in more light, therefore requiring less exposure than longer lenses but they tend to create barrel distortion, which might be undesirable. Lenses are usually considered to be wide if the focal length is 35 millimeters or less. Normal lenses generate images that generally look natural to the observer. Usually a normal lens is around 50 millimeters for a 35 millimeter film back. Long lenses, sometimes called telephoto lenses, magnify subjects in the distance and reduce perspective. They tend to flatten out depth and have a narrower depth of field. Because long lenses have a narrower field of view, they let in less light and therefore require higher exposure. This is why professional telephoto lenses can be huge to let in more light. They are called long lenses because the focal length is comparatively long. For example, a telephoto lens may be as long as 200 millimeters, 400 millimeters, or even more. 
The optics of all lenses changes with distance from the optical axis. While lens manufacturers try to avoid distortion, the engineering trade-offs usually make distortion of some sort inevitable. Barrel distortion occurs where image magnification decreases with distance from the optical axis. The apparent effect is that of an image which has been mapped around a sphere. This is most commonly seen in wide-angle lenses. Pincushion distortion occurs where image magnification increases with distance from the optical axis. The visible effect is that lines that do not go through the center of the image are bowed inwards toward the center of the image. This aberration is most commonly seen in long or telephoto lenses. Lens flares occur when very bright light enters the lens housing and reflects back and forth amongst the lens elements. If lens flare is required on a visual effects shot, it is best to avoid it on the shoot if possible and to add it in post. Chromatic aberration is the failure of a lens to focus all colors to the same point. It occurs because lenses refract or bend different wavelengths of light different amounts. Colors on the high end of the visible light spectrum, such as blue and violet, will refract more than the colors on the low end of the spectrum, such as red. Chromatic aberration manifests itself as fringes of color along boundaries that separate dark and bright parts of the image. Manufacturers attempt to correct for chromatic aberration by assembling compound lenses made of different types of glass to attempt to align the refraction of the different wavelengths. This will reduce the amount of aberration over a certain range of wavelengths, but it does not produce perfect correction. Chromatic aberration is most common in wider and lower quality lenses. Focus is the point where light rays originating from a point on an object converge. Many points of converged light make up an image that is in focus. An image is considered in focus if as much light as possible in the image or image region is well converged. The image is considered out of focus if the light is not well converged. An image that is out of focus appears blurry. This blurriness is three-dimensional as focus changes with distance from the subject. The focal point is a point onto which light traveling in parallel paths is focused. Light that is traveling in parallel paths is called collimated light. Since light can pass through a lens in either direction, a lens has two focal points, one on each side. In photography, the focal point is located at the image plane, where the recording medium resides. The distance from the image plane where the image is recorded to the subject that is in focus is the focal distance or object distance. For example, if a person is in focus in the image, and that person is 3 meters from the image plane, the focal distance is 3 meters. Commercial photography lenses allow for changes in focal distance by manipulating elements in the lens housing, usually with a dial. Object plane is the plane located at the focal or object distance that is theoretically in focus. In practice, the object plane is curved due to perspective. However, we tend to think of the object plane as flat, as that works for us most of the time. The field of focus consists of two points at a distance from the lens between which objects are reasonably in focus. Objects outside of the field of focus, either closer or farther away from the camera, will be out of focus. When we say depth of field, we are talking about the depth of the field of focus. Depth of field is important as it will define how much of the image is in focus at any given time. Lenses with great depth of field allow objects to remain in focus longer as they move toward and away from camera. Lenses with a narrow depth of field cause objects to quickly move out of focus as they move toward or away from camera, unless the focal distance is altered as the object moves. 
depth of field tends to decrease as focal length increases. In other words, greater magnification reduces depth of field. Narrower depth of field is often used to great compositional effect, causing the eye to ignore areas of the image that are out of focus and giving greater dramatic impact to the subject that is in focus. Angle of view and field of view are simply the portion of the world that is visible to the camera. Angle of view is expressed in angular degrees and is determined by the lens and the gate, while field of view is the rectangular object plane expressed in linear measurements such as feet and inches or meters. Objects outside the field of view and angle of view will not be recorded. Field of view will change based on distance from the camera, but angle of view will not. It is possible to have the field of view remain the same while changing the angle of view by moving the camera and altering the focal length. Anamorphic lenses are used to squash wide imagery onto a standard 35 mm frame. They do this by curving the light with mirrors or lenses. This makes full use of all the available exposure area, whereas without anamorphic lens, the wide image would have to be recorded with inferior resolution. The aperture is a variable hole within the optical system through which light passes. The size of the aperture can be changed by manipulating controls on the lens housing, usually a dial on the outside of the lens. A larger aperture allows more light that is less collimated. A smaller aperture allows less light that is more collimated. Since more highly collimated light produces a sharper image, it stands to reason that smaller apertures will improve focus. Larger apertures increase image exposure by letting in more light, while smaller apertures decrease image exposure.